This video will leave you shiver with anticipation. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd from Bishes RV in Coldwater, Michigan today uh, with a science fiction double feature as we're going to call it, keeping up with the theme there, Janet. This is the 23MK Grey Wolf and it's the camper so nice they built it twice. We're going to get to see this one a couple different ways today. We're going to mostly be looking at it in the uh, optional black label package, but I've also got some footage here. You're going to get to, in one video here today, directly compare against the standard series version of this. Now, basically, Black Label takes everything the base version does and then cranks it up a notch like Emerald Lagasse. But um, this floor plan, just boiling it down, it's only like, what, 28 feet long? The weight is, is ideal for half-ton towing, but it's got huge windows and uh, a slide-out that makes this small-ish, medium-sized camper, whatever you want to call it, not feel so small when you get there. This is, uh, it, it's a model that can have some decent travel access. You do that, I think you have to kind of slip past the dinette. We'll take a look at that. I'll close the slide up, we'll take a look at it. Very private bedroom on this one. It is a camp queen, but giving you good, bad, ugly, and fair information like that's what you're going to get in this video. The 23 season has seen the inclusion now of um, standard tankless water heater, so nobody has to take the chilly willy shower. And uh, we've got still a little mini camp kitchen on this one with a uh, little ice maker out there that as long as you got power and you got ice, uh, water, you got ice, folks. That thing keeps up very, very nicely. Also, that little door drops down, makes for a cool little drink station. You're going to get to see a couple little differences like the, the countertops and the cushions in the standard versus the black label. They've improved the uh, the solar package on this year. Still has the backup camera. Now has a way for you to get up to the roof, although the way actually isn't included, and I'll clarify that as we go. If you like this kind of information, showing you all the extra details and getting to see both ways, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and or leave me a note that says, thanks, nerd. Patient. So if you're sitting on the sofa in the back, which I, I think is probably like the primary seat where you're going to spend most of your time, this is what you're going to see right here. Should you choose to add a TV, you're at a nice direct-facing entertainment center. And since it's not a super slide, that's not like a football field away, although certainly it uh, could be a little bit closer. We're going to talk more about that very interestingly placed uh, fireplace uh, in a little bit as we go here. Working our way around, uh, the uh, interior of these has seen a full facelift. doesn't matter if you're looking at Standard series or black label, and we're inside of the black label unit today. Ooh, this is why I like to sit down sometimes. You see things like those extra overhead outlets. You know what I would do with that? I'd put like a little USB adapter, and I would like use that little ledge, the little window treatment right there. I'd use that like a little phone shelf. I, I'd make that a little phone charging station. Leave all my counter space here uh, wide open. Now, when you're sitting down, you start to realize that there's actually not uh bad window coverage in this one frankly it's pretty darn good and that's one of those things that helps the rv look and feel a little bit bigger that window right there obviously full viewing it is privacy shade ready and as we start working our way into some more details here right up top you see that uh control panel with the obi-wan kenobi uh you know motion activation on it what's nice about that is you can leave the lights off in the rv and then the panel will show you, you know, where it is when you walk back in and you can kick the lights on when you need. Now, the RV's six and a half foot tall inside, but that skylight makes everything look and feel a little bit bigger. You'll see another one of those uh, in the bathroom. And obviously there's a privacy shade. Well, well, I don't know. If somebody's on your roof, I don't know. I, I didn't mean privacy shade. I meant sunshade. You get the idea. If someone's on your roof, uh, hopefully you hear them. I don't know. That's creepy. Now, uh, again, the fireplace, they couldn't put it down at ground level because it would be blocked by the uh, dinette, which is a full-size true U dinette. And uh, it, it basically, you know, wouldn't be able to uh, bump heat in the RV the way that you really want it to. It would just kind of really cook the one side of the dinette there. So instead, it's up here where it can singe your chest hairs. Um, I, I would say fellas... But I, I don't want to be discretionary. I don't want to assume that there aren't some ladies out there with chest hair that needs uh, singed. You know, I'm equal opportunity like that, regardless. It's, it's kind of funny. They didn't technically get rid of all the carpet in the slide. 
but they did get rid of it where it counts. And to me, that's one of the more significant updates in the 2023 Gray Wolf series. They, uh, you know, made the slide itself, the step-up slide, carpetless. Now, notice little details, too. Like, over here in the corner, there's a handy little set of USB outlets. Cherokee is one of the brands that just made putting USB plugs all over the place. Uh, very common and very popular. Now, from the bathroom looking back, once again, we saw some of the windows before. They just straight maximized the window over that uh, rear sofa area right there. And up top here... This is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, and you don't have to upgrade to that. That's something cool, well, <laughs> no pun intended, cool that Cherokee does just as a matter of happenstance. And with this not being a laminated rear wall, they can do things like put power outlets by the, uh, the, the sofa side stands or side stand, since they only did the one here. And something, I, like, I, this is a jackknife sofa. And as far as I know, it's basically all they allow for here. I would really love it if this floor plan allowed for something like a theater seat or some recliners or whatnot. Um, but the thing is, those are bigger than a jackknife sofa and they may actually cause problems for when you want to close that slide. So they kind of built this trying to keep it in that half ton towable, you know, 28 foot total length thing and, and a reasonable weight. Extending it further would start working against that. It's kind of like every RV's greatest asset is its greatest liability. I say that all the time, and, and I really, really feel strongly that it's true. Now, diving into some more details here, we're going to see a quick comparison between Black Label and Standard Series. So, again, we're looking at Black Label, which gives us solid surface countertops, whereas the Standard Series, you'll have sealed edge thermal foil all over. Additionally, you have a little change in the, uh, the color of the seating in the dinette, but everything else in terms of interior decor elements in the living room and kitchen will be the same. You'll see a very slight change when we uh, get our way over to the, um, uh, up into the bedroom. Now, the um, refrigerator in this is a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. It's one of those that's just shy of 11 cubic foot. I think you can actually option down into a six cubic foot two-way fridge. I don't believe there's a whole lot of people who do that with great regularity in these, but know that that is a potential available option on one of these. You also see that below that dinette, you have those just full on, uh, you know, mega storage drawers that are full extension. There is storage below the rear bench as well, but there's no easy, obvious way to get to it. You do have to kind of disassemble uh, everything. Now, normally I'm not a fan of pedestal style dinettes. However, considering that is a step up slide out, which has helped keeping the, uh, the, the overall exterior height and the weight of this down. Interestingly, the step up slide allows to run on a smaller chassis, which saves a lot of weight and money. It does bump into the RV a little bit because it's a step up though. I think a free floating table has a potential of falling off a little bit. So I actually think that is sort of the right uh, choice right there. I'd be curious though, you know, um, what's your two cents on that? I, again, I never claim to be the, the one who knows my way is the best way or anything like that. I think that there's validity to a couple different concepts. I uh, kind of talked about that when I was stumbling over my words one of the 67 times I've already done that in this video with the sunshade up there. And um, I saw somebody on a Facebook group the other day wondering, what is this? Well, that's the travel lock to keep the fridge from flying open when you're zipping down the road. Down below the fridge, though, we've got a couple cool things. You've got a hard battery disconnect switch, uh, although the solar does bypass that to always keep the battery uh, tended. You've also got a battery monitor down there as well as your auto-detect converter. So if you put, you know, lead acid, if you put a, uh, a lithium battery, whatever the case may be on here, um, it's, uh, you know, capable of registering those things. Now, again, the RV being six and a half foot tall means that uh, my head does have to be in the skylight. And I'll tell you, I feel like in the Black Label Edition, that uh, Fancy Pants uh, shower head thing, let me open this up. The Fancy shower head thing that they're using in here, it almost feels like a little bit too much in this radius shower. Radius showers already kind of struggle with space as it is, eating up a bunch of that, especially right below the skylight. That was, I don't know. I might actually say this is one of the times that I don't know that I really, really care for that. What is nice, though, in this walkthrough bathroom, first of all, it provides a ton of privacy for the front bedroom. But uh, additionally, it creates space for a bunch of additional storage. Like, take a look at what we're looking at over here. Now, if you like this kind of layout, but you'd prefer more of a rectangular shower instead of that radius shower, check out the Salem and Wildwood version of this floor plan. I'll leave you a link in the video description. 
And I was trying to do this to sort of showcase the fact that I'm standing in the shower right now. But when I did that little camera float, it like my wife and I, since it's October at the time that I'm recording this, I have no idea when this is going to be published because I'm like, I have so many videos done that I'm trying to get out. But my wife and I, every October, we go through and watch the entire Halloween series. And those creepy little camera angles just scream Michael Myers to me. You know what I mean? Now, taking a look over on the left, you see that you've got that like huge, just like Cherokee signature calling card uh uh vanity but then behind the toilet you have this humongous storage array um now down below here that's open shelving i think that'd be good for like toilet paper or you know towels when you get there but you do have some enclosed storage which is nice they kind of split the difference you see great leg room uh around that toilet as well and it actually does not matter if you're getting the Black Label Edition or the Standard Series. When you're in a full Grey Wolf or Cherokee, you always get the giant fart uh, <laughs> fart fan. Well, I usually call the little one the fart fan. I call this the Fajita Friday Fume Fighter. But you get the idea. The fact is you get that big vent for big airflow. Now, people sometimes ask, why are the doors slotted on top? And I actually believe the true answer is because it's easier for them to build that way because if the they, they don't always have to build the door and hang it exactly where they want it. But the fact is when it's slotted like that, it can suck a lot of that hot air out of the bedroom, uh, bathroom, I can't talk, bedroom or bathroom, I'm combining the two words, and exhaust it out of here while still maintaining your privacy, which is very cool. Now, up here in the bedroom, you won't really see any significant differences uh, in the Black Label Edition. I'm going to give you just kind of a peek around here first. Uh, actually, right over here on our left side, this is where we do have uh, TV hookups across from the bed. If I forget to show those, people often assume that it doesn't have them. Now, when we get uh, over here, this changed up a little bit. Last year, it basically still had the same things where it had a speaker mount for a Bluetooth speaker that's not included with it, and it's USB plugs and household plugs. And they still have that. They just have them kind of split up into different objects now. And I try to be fair. I try to share the good with the bad. I know this is a deal breaker for some folks. That's a Camp Queen. That is a 60-inch wide but 74-inch short queen that it, uh, not everybody loves, obviously. And I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to shirk that information. I want you folks to know exactly what you're getting in here. Now, there's only two little differences that you'll notice going from this black label to a standard series. First of all, take a look at this big window over here. In the standard series, it actually opens for airflow, but weirdly, in black label, it does not. That's that's one of the only things that I, I feel a standard series does better than a black label. Other than that, the black label edition gives us the little, I think it's supposed to be like wolf fur, but tell me looking at that right now, it doesn't kind of look a little bit like uh, Gizmo the Mogwai got skinned and turned into a pillow. Gizmo, oh no! And I kind of figured, what better way to demonstrate that this has front to back road mode access than actually starting up here all the way in the bedroom with the slide closed. Now, if you're familiar with this brand over the last couple of years, you may recognize a little difference here. They have gone away from a Schwintech slide system on this, gone to a Norco cable slide. Um, I've seen a lot of manufacturers doing that recently. And when I've asked the reasoning why, the answer has been almost unanimous, and that has been, um, you know, service reliability. Uh, evidently, a lot of people feel that that is a more reliable slide system. Now, certainly, it gets tight right here. But just like I'm going to demonstrate in real time, you do a little bit of the sideways travel trailer two-step. And whether you're going from the bedroom to the outside or from the outside to the bedroom, if you need to stop, if you need to, uh, you know, get to the bathroom, if the RV's in storage and you have to get up to the bedroom or uh, whatever, I think this is extremely Cracker Barrel compliant. And if you appreciate the fact that we take the time to close them up and showcase them for you. If you're new with us, hit that subscribe button. And if you're back again... Let me know with a little hashtag nerd herd in the comment section or like the video or I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. And I figured since we mostly saw it in black label edition on the inside, we will mostly see it in standard edition on the outside. And then I'll get you a second look at it more than ever. Now that the gray wolves are actually, well, white wolves. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is more obvious than ever which series you're looking at, whether it's the standard series or the black label edition. Now, this is something that throws a lot of people off. They see black label and think, ooh, yeah, aluminum. No, not actually aluminum structure. Black label edition is still a stick-built structure 
exactly like we're looking at right here. It's just a fiberglass skin on top of that uh, structure. Now, getting into the details that apply to both here, you got your black tank flush and outside utility shower with a single sewer outlet. You have but one stink pickle uh, exhaust point on these things. Whether it's standard series or black label, you always have the option of putting power stabilizers on these. We're looking at the manuals right there. And a uh, tankless water heater has become standard on uh, the entire Cherokee family of RVs, whether it's Grey Wolf, Alpha Wolf, etc. And a lot of people will ask, you know, what's the difference between a Cherokee or a Grey Wolf and an Alpha Wolf? And and there's there's a lot of differences, but the, the biggest one is a major conceptual change in the structure. Alpha Wolf is where you actually start to get laminated walls. So a lot of people say, oh yeah, that's an aluminum RV. Yeah, in the walls, four other sides of the RV are still stick built. There's just a funny thing in the business about that. People tend to only care about the sidewall construction. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I, and I kind of wonder why that is, regardless. Up front here, <clears throat> these have a water heater on the other side, so they do not have a full true pass-through. That's just something that Cherokee has standardized, but you can get to that from under the bed uh, as well if need be. Now, the underbelly of this isn't fully enclosed. The holding tanks are enclosed. It kind of uh, threads the needle in a little bit different way that way. They are not attempting uh, to try to be some kind of epic four seasons camper or anything like that. They're just, just a normal camper. What do you think of that little, uh, the new mirrored finish on the windows? Last year there was absolutely zero window treatment on these. Um, I prefer mirrored over nothing. I think I personally prefer shaded over mirrored, although man, when they're clean, those mirrored windows look amazing. Now what's under the patio uh, uh, awning is awesome. I like how it uh, encompasses that door nicely. It does kind of feel like the uh, awning could be a little bit longer. Now over here, because uh, in the little, I'm gonna call it camp convenience center or drink station, it doesn't have any sort of cooker. So they leave you a propane cooker hooker right over here by the tires. And actually, I don't recall that being by the tires last year. I think that was up by the nose, so they're putting that in a better place. Um, it, well, for in my opinion, I don't know, opinions can vary. Let me know what you think about that. My, I'm not an authority. The uh, speakers are down at belly slash uh, chest level, so we're not blowing away the neighbors. And um, the uh, TV hookup actually right in between those. Now you've got that little miniature drink station right there. It's a little outdoor fridge um, and an ice maker with what is basically an outside shower. Um, well, not basically, it quite literally is if you take a look at it. But that's uh, essentially there. One, it's nice to have water function on the campsite of your RV. Two, keeping that ice maker up and running. That is, uh, that's, I'm telling you, those things work very, very well. They crank out ice like crazy. Now, uh, over here, we got ourselves a drunken Uncle Leash latch. And on the back side, you've got your um, fold down cargo rack. Now, that is, I think, 200 pound rated. Actually, there's a sticker right here. Oh, it's upside down, and I'm not good at reading that. 200 pound rated. Nailed it. Nice. Um, that is before the now standard spare tires applied. Last year, spare tires were optional. Um, I, never, I never really understood that. I'm glad they're not optional any longer. Now up top here over that big breeze window, you've got your standard uh, InSight backup camera. Get it? In sight, in sight, LOL, ha ha. And uh, <laughs> you've also got that uh, mount to get you up there to the roof. Now, the, uh, the mount is designed to work in conjunction with one of those portable telescoping ladders, but uh, the RV itself doesn't actually have a, uh, uh, an, uh, a ladder included with it nor can you get one from the factory, so kind of keep that in mind. Now that we've covered all that, let's take another pass around this thing in the Black Label Edition, because certainly the exterior of the RV is where the bulk of the Black Label features come into play. Now, one of the things that's kind of sticking out to me, they have stuck with a white AC shroud even here in the Black Label, um, which will help that uh, operate a little more efficiently, more effectively. So what are you getting in Black Label on the outside? Well. I think the first most obvious thing is you're getting that smexy, uh, high gloss fiberglass. But once again, this is not a laminated series of RVs. And I, I don't believe in lying by omission. I believe that's still lying. I, I like folks to know that kind of deeper information. Um, it's still a stick built structure. Basically the fiberglass skin 
is laminated to a, uh, a dual layer Luon, which is then attached to the walls. Now that basically means what they've done here is they've added a 3 8 sheet of plywood all the way around the RV. So black label, one of the things they don't talk about is that it adds some weight, but you can see that reflected in the specs chart that I've flashed a couple times. You'll see the graphics obviously change a little bit to go with it. You may have noticed uh, the uh, you know swap over from the mirrored uh, non-frameless windows to the uh, frameless heavy tinted windows, which is kind of cool. For the most part though, on the exterior, it's a lot of cosmetic elements. What's interesting is the uh, the nose of this is still aluminum, and a lot that throws a lot of people off because you see fiberglass on the sides. But the nose of this is actually like two thirds thicker than the standard um, aluminum used on the side walls of most stick and tin campers, including the normal Cherokees. Now that's true in both Black Label and Standard Series. You have a much much thicker uh, aluminum on the front of this thing. Uh, than you would normally have on the sides. And that's there to help resist wind buffeting, uh, resist rocks being chucked at it, all that kind of stuff. Now you're getting a little bit of a peek of it here, but if I, uh, well, I'm not gonna tell OSHA how I got this footage, but if you look up at the roof, you can see uh, up here, now that is fully walkable. It's a 3 8 inch roof deck with 16 inch on center uh, uh, roof trusses. And then um, you've got a uh, uh, 100 watt now factory standard solar. Instead of 50, that's now 100. Now, that's still not the be all end all of solar, but they're also using a better solar controller than they were last year that does allow for greater expansion. Although if you get too crazy with it, uh, you may need to upgrade some wiring gauges. So kind of keep that in mind right there. Um, the walls, by the way, your uh, wall studs are about 16 inches on center and your floor joists are about 12 inches on center with a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. Now the skeletal structure of what I just described is the same whether you're looking here at a black label or a standard series. The only thing that really changes is the skin and the color of the aluminum on the nose. So what's your final vote? Leave me a comment down there and let me know. Do you prefer Black Label Smixy package? Or do you prefer it more in just the smarter class standard series? I don't think there's a wrong answer here. And uh, to help you out, to, because I think obviously someone's gonna say, well, it really comes down to price, doesn't it there, fella? Well, I think that's fair. So I'm gonna leave you a link in the video description. You'll see all the listings for the 23MKs we have standard or black label at any of the stores that we carry them all right there so you can always see current pricing and availability, whether you're curious or whether you're serious. So once again, if you appreciate our efforts today, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think about her. Whether, what, what do you like and what, I always like to ask, what's that one thing you would change given the opportunity? And sometimes when enough people have the same thing they want to change, we relay that to the manufacturer and you'd be surprised what different changes have been done based on your feedback. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.